You've probably heard the story Red Riding Hood. This is Super Red Riding Hood. Not far from here, near a small forest, lives a girl named Ruby. Ruby's favorite color is red. She loves red berries, her red boots, and especially the red cloak her grandma made for her. When Ruby puts on her red cloak, she becomes Super Red Riding Hood. And down here you see this little girl saying, my baby! Her baby's stuck up in the tree and there goes Super Red Riding Hood to the rescue. One sunny afternoon, Ruby was very busy playing superhero in her room when she heard her mother call from downstairs. Ruby! Is it something important, Mom? She called back. It sure is. Looks like Super Red Riding Hood has an important mission, Ruby declared. She threw on her red cloak and grabbed her flashlight. A superhero must be prepared for anything. There she goes down the banister. You've been indoors all day, her mother said. Why don't you go pick some raspberries to have with your snack? This did sound like an important mission to Ruby, but she could see that her mom meant business. Oh, it did not sound, sorry, it did not sound like an important mission. Ruby kissed her mom goodbye and set out along the path to the raspberry bushes with her lunchbox in hand. The woods are deep and dark and full of danger, Ruby said to herself, but Super Red Riding Hood is never scared. Ruby was marching along bravely when, oh no! Ruby's big red rubber boot almost crushed a tiny snail in the middle of the path. This is a dangerous place for a little snail, she said. Luckily, Super Red Riding Hood is here to rescue you. <coughs> she carefully moved the little snail out of harm's way. A good deed done, she said. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Ruby skipped toward the woods. Who's afraid of the deep, dark woods? The deep, dark woods, the deep, dark woods. Who's afraid of the deep, dark woods? Na, 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 not me, she sang. When she got to the edge of the forest, she stopped and peered ahead. A cool, a chill drifted out of the shadowy darkness. A superhero must be silent like a cat and watch out for danger, Ruby whispered, and tiptoed into the woods. The forest was full of strange noises. It was a very good thing she'd remembered to bring her flashlight. There's a hoo-hoo. You know what that is. That's the owl. And then she stepped on a twig that said, crack. And a woodpecker in the tree says, tack a tack a tack a tack Owl, twig, woodpecker, she said aloud, shining her bright light toward the different sounds. Who's afraid of the deep, dark woods? The deep, dark woods, the deep, dark woods. Who's afraid of the deep, dark woods? Na, 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 not me, she sang as she walked. Before long, she came to a sunny clearing packed with raspberry bushes. She ran to fill her lunchbox with juicy red berries. Mission accomplished, she said triumphantly. She was just snapping her lunchbox closed when she heard a new sound. A big, rumbly, growly, terrifying sound. And over here on the next page, we have some clues as to what that is. Do you see this and this? What do you think that is? Ruby's tummy twisted in a knot. Her teeth began to chatter. A superhero must be brave, she reminded herself. Who's afraid of the... Wolf! He 
towered over Ruby, looking frightful with his sharp claws, his yellow fangs, and his bushy tail swishing from side to side. The wolf inched closer. Soon, he was so close to Ruby, she could feel his steamy breath on her face. Excuse me, I'd, I'd like to get by, Ruby said in a smaller voice than she would have liked. The wolf didn't move. He grinned and asked in a crackly growl, Where are you going all alone in this big, dark forest? Ruby narrowed her eyes and peered at the shaggy beast. Why do you want to know? Oh, um, just curious, I suppose. Maybe you could tell me this. What's in the box? Mmm, look at that. Would you be afraid if you were in the forest and saw a wolf like that? <laughs> Before she could answer, the wolf lunged. Quick as a rabbit, Super Red Riding Hood popped out of the way and used her super skills to leap and dart past the tricky wolf. She scrambled up an oak tree and perched on a branch just out of the wolf's reach. While she sat and caught her breath, the grumbly wolf skulked around the trunk of the tree. And there he goes, round and round and round and round the tree. Ruby had had enough. Wolf, she called down, let me pass. But the wolf stayed put. Wolf, I'm going to count to five. You'd better leave me alone. The wolf still didn't move. One, Ruby said firmly. Two, three, four. He could see that Ruby meant business. Okay, okay, I'll leave you alone. Ruby started climbing back down the tree, but then growl. Woof? It's my tummy, the wolf moaned. I'm just really hungry. Well, why didn't you say so? Ruby jumped out of the tree, her red cloak floating down behind her like a parachute. If you wanted some of my snack, you could have just asked, she said. The wolf looked at Ruby with a big, drooly smile. Okay, can I have some? He asked, holding out a paw. Ruby pulled her lunchbox out of the, out the wolf's reach. Not so fast, wolf. You really scared me before, snarling at me with your big fangs and those sharp claws. The wolf's ears drooped. He looked at the ground. I'm sorry, he said. <clears throat> Ruby took a long look at the sad, hungry wolf. Ah, forget about it, she said at last. The wolf perked up. Please? He asked very politely. A superhero always helps those in need. So, Super Red Riding Hood did what a superhero would do. She popped open her lunchbox and shared the juicy berries. As Ruby and the wolf snacked together under the big oak tree, Ruby remarked, I didn't know wolves like raspberries. Oh, yes, said the wolf cheerfully. They're our favorite. The wolf sat thinking for a little while as he munched. I didn't know little girls could be superheroes, he said. Oh, yes, said Ruby with a wide smile. We can. <laughs> that is the end of the story. And there they wave goodbye to each other. They go back to their homes. Well, kind of nice. Have a different little Red Riding Hood kind of story. All right, Miss Lisa, what do you have for us? All right, I have an awesome story called Giant Pants. Take a look at this guy. Look at this giant. 
Looks like he's actually missing his pants. Let's see what happens in this story. All right, so the beginning page here shows that they are building something. Let's see if that plays into the story at all. Bellum was a giant. And like most giants, he was good at stomping and napping and losing things. And one morning, he lost something very important. What do you think it is he lost? <laughs> Look, he lost his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Belbum had only one pair of pants, which the tailor in the town had made just for him. And now, they were lost. So looking in his little cabin, do you guys see his pants anywhere? In the drawer or on the bed or under the bed? No. I don't see his pants anywhere, do you? Where could he have put them? Well, he searched his whole house. All right, look, he's looking in his bedroom, he's looking in the pot of stew and in his teapot, no pants. After peeking outside to make sure no one was watching, he searched his backyard. Take a look, he's looking around. Still no pants. Oh. Giants are also good at being very angry. And now Belbum was angry. <laughs> Looks like he's pouting, doesn't it? Poor giant, lost his pants. Where are my pants, he roared. Oh my. He roared so loud and got so angry, he upset his chair and table, didn't he? There goes his milk. Unfortunately, that didn't help him find his pants. But he did make a big mess. And then he had a thought. Oh, maybe my friends can help me. That's a pretty good idea, right? If you lose something, maybe your friends can help. He checked that no one was around to see him, and then he headed off into the woods. See what friends he finds. First, he went to see his friend Polyphemus, the Cyclops. I've lost my pants, Belbum explained. Can I borrow a pair of yours? Well, I only wear togas, Polyphemus said, but I do have an extra one. Belbum tried it on. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> no, 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 he said. I need pants. Did you look in your house, Polyphemus asked. Of course I did, Belbum roared, and he marched away. He went straight to see Old Grit, who was a very wise gnome. See the little gnomes? They're in their house, aren't they? I've lost my pants, Belbum said. I can see that, <laughs> said Old Grit. You can try a pair of mine. They're stretchy. <laughs> Take a look right here. He's going to offer the giant his pants. Belbum tried to put them on. <laughs> look, it looks like he's only getting a toe or so. Not stretchy enough, he bellowed. <laughs> Did you search your room, old Grint asked. Yes, Belbum am replied, and he stomped off. There he goes. So he's had two friends right now, and they, neither of them can help him. Let's see who he goes to next. He found Lucy the unicorn and told her that he had lost his pants. I don't wear pants. You can try that, she suggested. I have tried it, and I don't like it. Have you checked your dresser, Lucy called? But Belbim had already stormed off. Look at him. His shoulders are hunched. His eyes are squished. He needed pants. Giant pants. And there was only one way to get them. So what do you think, boys and girls? How is he going to get some giant pants? He had to talk and walk to the tailor in town. But he had to go with no pants. <laughs> so look, he's waving at the dragon. Hi. So waving at these guys, hi. He's walking in through the castle. Look at everybody's faces. <gasps> the giant doesn't have pants on. 
When he got there, the tailor made him a new pair of giant pants. Take a look. He's measuring him. Looks like they got lots of different fabric. And those pants are pretty fancy. Belbum even decided to get a few extra pairs of pants. That's a good idea, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> On his way back, he gave each of his friends a pair of giant pants. You know, just in case he ever lost it again. So look at Lucy the unicorn. She's using it like a, a cape. Look at the little gnomes. It's like a covering for their outside picnic area. And look at the Cyclops. It's wearing it on his head. Now, when he got home, he cleaned up the mess he had made and put away his new pants. So he's taken off his yellow pair. Where do you think he's going to put them? Hopefully he puts it someplace he remembers. <laughs> and that's when, I bet you guessed it, he found his old pants. Silly old giant. And then we have the whole kingdom right there. So pretty cool story, right? Giant Pants by Mark Fearing. All right, boys and girls. So in this story, we had a giant and a cyclops and a gnome and a unicorn. Okay, so he had some, he had some friends, didn't he? Now the giant, of course, is the biggest one of all. The Little gnome, he's the tiniest one of all. And then you have the cyclops was sort of just a regular man size. So today we're going to work on some size ordering. So I have got some things that a giant might wear. Maybe in the winter, he may wear some mittens, might and he. So we've got three different mittens up here. One would be for the giant to wear. One would be for the Cyclops, and one would be for the Gnome. Can you figure out which one goes for which? Which is the biggest of the three mittens? If you've picked this one, you are right. Which one would that little tiny Gnome wear? Now this one looks pretty big up here, but it's smaller compared to the other two, right? So our Gnome's going to wear this one, and our Cyclops would wear the middle-sized one. Good job, boys and girls. Now, what about socks? You know, a giant has to wear socks, doesn't he? So look at these. Oh, that one's really big. Not sure he's going to stay up there really well. Oops, I guess they're all going to hang oh, like they're, well. on a, they're on the clothesline. They're out <laughs> drying, aren't they? Okay, so look at these three. Which one belongs to Belbum the giant? Is it this one? Or this one? Or this one? I hope you've said this one because look how huge it is. That's nothing like the little pair of pants that the gnome gave him, right? And so, okay, so which one would the gnome wear? Hmm, is it this one or this one or this one? Well, out of these three, this one is the smallest, right? So this would be for our friend the gnome. And Mr. Cyclops, he gets our medium sock, okay, the one there that is between those two sizes. Okay, so let's take those socks down, and I have one more thing. You know, some people like to wear shoes. Sometimes they wear fancy shoes or boots or tennis shoes. So look what I've got here today. I have got some shoes, and they don't want to stay straight either, do they? All right, so which one of those shoes, boys and girls, would belong to Belbum the Giant? Now you're looking at them. we got this one and this one and this one. Out of those three... This is our biggest one, right? So this one would be for Belbum. And the Cyclops, which is sort of a normal human-sized person, he'd wear this one, right? And so who would wear this one? If you said the gnome, you're right. So it's sort of fun to look at sizes. We have small and medium and large. And in our story, we had our large giant, our medium-sized Cyclops, and our itty-bitty little gnome. I hope you've enjoyed this activity. I think Miss Kim has another book for us today. I sure do. I found a good one just before it was time to come. <laughs> I had a different story, but I decided I like this one better. Why do cats have tails? Now, maybe you have some ideas about that. Think about that. Why do you think cats have tails? We'll see what we find out in here. Grandpa, why do cats have tails? 
It looks like they have a lot of cats. <laughs> oh, and one thing, if, if you can see it, I'm not sure you can see it uh, there as you're watching, but in every picture, there's a little mouse. And, and sometimes it might be hard to see from where you're watching, but there he is up there on the branch. So on each page, you might look for the little mouse. But the little girl wonders, why do cats have tails? Hmm, maybe so that they can swing through trees? Do you think that looks right? Do you think cats swing through tees, trees by hanging with their tails? That's kind of silly looking, isn't it? I don't think Grandpa has a very good idea there, do you? No, Grandpa, monkeys swing through trees. I said every page, it's not every page. It's every time she asks the question, I think. So, the little mouse is here somewhere. See if you can find him. Well, let me see, said Grandpa. It could be to swish away flies. Well, that's an interesting idea. We do, we all know in animals that swish away flies with their tails, like the cow here. And horses swish flies with their tail. But I don't think cats do, do you? No, Grandpa. Cows and horses do that. Cats don't swish away flies. <laughs> Look at that poor cat. I think the cat got swished away by the cow's tail. <laughs> and that little mouse is on that page. I see him. Do you see him? Look, he's hiding right up there on her back. Well, maybe it's so they can swim faster. Hmm. And here we see a fish. We know that a fish uses his tail to swim faster. I don't know about a cat, though. What's strange about this, that a cat's in the water using its tail to swim. Now there's something more strange than just a cat using its tail to swim. Did you guess it? Let's see. <laughs> Grandpa, cats don't like swimming. <laughs> and I see that little mouse peeking up. This one's kind of hard to see. He blends in with the rocks. There he is, right there. Cats don't like swimming. <laughs> Perhaps it's to warn off other animals. Hmm. I don't know. It's an interesting thought. I don't see the little mouse there. No, no, no. Rattlesnakes do that. <laughs> See the little mouse in that picture, do you? Well, there he is. Now there's an interesting thing about mice and cats. I think you know that one. <laughs> Could it be to help them build things? Oh my goodness. I don't know, where's the mouse? I see him, there he is, right up there on top of the chair. Now, have you ever seen a cat do this? Walk around carrying building materials in, with its tail? I've never seen that happen. It's kind of interesting. No, it's not. Cats don't build things. Beavers do. There's your beaver. Big flat tail, getting ready to build something. I know, I know, it must be to help them fly. Oh my, I think that's the silliest idea yet. What about you? Showing a little bird here flying. You ever see a cat flying through the sky like that? Don't think so. 
<laughs> I don't know, Grandpa. I think you're teasing this little girl in the story. Oh my, look at that. <laughs> I think if a cat found itself flying, it might look like that. Don't be silly, Grandpa. Cats can't fly. They're kind of missing wings, I think. How is that possible to fly without wings? <clears throat> hmm, says Grandpa. Why do you think cats have tails then? Hmm. Let me ask you, boys and girls. Why do you think cats have tails? <laughs> Well, maybe it's to show that they love us. Hmm. Well, you know, when they walk around you, they do kind of wrap their tail around you like that, don't they? What do you think, boys and girls? Is it possible that's what they use their tails for? To let us know they love us? I suppose that's possible. Oh, the little mouse found a really cute place to take a nap. Do you see him? Look close. There he is in Grandpa's slipper, taking a little nap. Now maybe you like cats. I'm not much of a cat lover. So if I had all these cats crawling all over me, I would not be comfortable at all. <laughs> and that is the end of our story. Hmm, you might ask a few people and find out what they think about cats and tails. Well, that's all we have for today for our story time. We hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.